angels, good and bad. As far as the bad goes, talked about Nephilim before, what happened in Eden with Eve, the watchers coming down, having kids with the women, spawning their evil breed, and how they could conceal themselves, speaking of the bad ones, and they could look like us if they chose to do so. Well, so can good angels, and this is Hebrews 13 too, and you can see in different, there's just one, that you can see in different scriptures. Don't forget to show the hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. That's telling you, they look like you and me. You see? They can. They could probably look like a tree, or a flower, or an animal whatever they choose to do. And then you can see in different you know different times about Sodom and Gomorrah as far as that goes. Two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. He Lot saw him, he rose to meet him, and bowed down with his face to the ground. He said, Now behold, my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house and spend the night. Wash your feet, and you can rise early in the morning and go on your way. So, they did spend the night with him. They did eat food, just like a, a human being. They consumed food. And then what else do we already know about that story? The the townspeople wanted those newcomers to the town. And they basically wanted to have sex with them. There was a lot of you know, immoral homosexuality going on then. And they wanted it there was some new pardon the pun, but there were some some new fresh meat in town and, and they wanted it. Well, it didn't happen, of course. The town became no more. This is a different kind of a writing and I've showed it before. It is the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and this is tablet number eight. Now, this is not biblical but it is interesting at least this particular one because it it describes uh, different different type of a in a way of how these entities these dark angels these fallen ones many of you will call them demons or whatever but in reality, that's all they are, is fallen angels. How they come and conceal themselves. It tells you right here, and, and if this was... If this someone is going to say this is a satanic writing written by the dark side, well, they sure are narking out on themselves. Because in the form of man, they're among us. But only to sight were they as our men. Serpent headed. You get that? Serpent headed. When the glamour was lifted. But appearing to man as men among men. And they got into the councils, they crept into the councils. The ruling system back then, the government so to speak, taking forms that were like unto men they crept into the governments that ran everything because they looked just like men slaying by their arts chiefs of the kingdoms 
taking their form and ruling over man. So they basically crept into the council, took over the heads of the governments, and basically inhabited as the person they got rid of the leader. And it looked like the leader, it walked like the leader, it talked like the leader, but it took their form and then it began to rule. Only by magic could they be discovered. Only by sound. Sound. How can you... Can their faces be seen with sound? Hmm? Well, it's, it's the, the spectrum of sound. You get it? sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and rule in his place but know ye the masters were mighty in magic able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent he keeps repeating that serpent and that is not a snake it is more of a uh, uh, I want to say reptile looking creature able to send him back to his place came they to man and taught him the secret the word that only a man can pronounce swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent and cast him forth from the place among men now this is telling there was some way using sound we taught a secret using sound and there was a word some type of a word that produced a sound type vibration that lifted their concealment and made them visible to what they were and then the, you could see then it wasn't one of it wasn't one of humans and then they were exposed and then they were able to get them out of there it tells you beware the serpent still liveth in a place that is open at all at times to the world unseen they walk among thee in places where the rites have been said Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the semblance of men. It's telling you they're going to do it again. Called may they be by the master who knows the white or the black. And that reminds me of Solomon. King Solomon, he was said to have a book that contained writings that would allow him to call and use fallen angels take them out from where they belong command them and control them and then put them back and make them go back that's how they say some of the ancient structures were actually built but only the white master may control and bind them while in the flesh Seek not the kingdom of shadows, for evil will surely appear, for only the master of brightness shall conquer the shadow of fear. Know ye, O my brother, that fear is an obstacle great. Be master of all in the brightness, the shadow will soon disappear. Hear ye and heed my wisdom, the voice of light is clear. Seek not the valley of shadow, and light will only appear. Are you getting what I'm trying to get you to understand how they can be all around you and you think they're us now this tablet is also known as a smegardine or tabula smegardina a cryptic piece of the hermeticia reputed to contain the secret of the prima materia and its transmutation regarded by European alchemists 
the foundation of their art and its hermetic tradition. Although Hermes Trismegistus is the author named, in that text the first known appearance of the Emerald Tablet is in a book written in Arabic somewhere around the 6th and 8th centuries, first translated into Latin in the 12th century. The layers of meaning have been associated with the creation of the Philosopher's Stone, laboratory experimentation, phase transition, the alchemical magnum opus, the ancient classical and element system, and the correspondence between macrocosm and microcosm. It's a combination of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. Despite his claim of antiquity, I believe it be an Arabic work written between the 6th and 8th centuries. Well, <clears throat> you know that the Greek god Hermes, the Egyptian god Thoth, <clears throat> were not good. It's like I'm telling you, this is not biblical, but it still gives you some secrets how these things are contacted and how these things cloak themselves to look like men. So, you can go back and this would be white magic, so to speak, like the Book of Thoth talked about, where these good angels somehow can make themselves look like us. So, this is God's writing, and we know He is truth and will not lie. Oh, it is telling. Angels can look like humans. And then you have Tablet 8, the Key of Mystery of the Book of Thoth, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, who are not biblical, and their gods are not the real ones. But yet, in, inside of the writing, it is also showing you how these things work, at least, at least, on the dark side. At least the dark ones that would seek to do us harm. That is how they do it. It has something to do with frequency. Frequency tuning into a certain frequency and there is a way to uncloak them so that their true form can be seen and that is done through sound and a, and a certain word and when you have that knowledge somehow you can uncloak these things and then know they are not human. <laughs> so the leaders and the councils around the world that do the things that we have to live under in the system, that put their boot on our throat and continually hold us back and screw us around well, we're looking at a man or a woman, and it just may not be a man or a woman. It may be a fallen one, an evil one. That's what I'm trying to show, is that they can and do take the form of men, unbeknownst and unseen to us.